Hello everyone. Good evening. It is time for live event. I am your host again. My name is Caroline. I hope you can hear me. Please just let me know that everything is clear. Today we will have a very interesting topic, which is how to tell your children that they are convinced, uh, sorry, conceived via egg donation. I am sure many of you have asked that question time and time again. So this time we have invited a special guest, a fertility coach, author, artist, and international lecturer, Carmen Martinez Hover. She will try to give you some useful advice, I am sure. And after the presentation, she will be answering your questions. And of course, let me remind you that the presentation will last approximately 20 to 25 minutes and our Q&A session will follow. Remember, all is being recorded and you can type in all your questions uh, in the sec uh, chat section and we will be publishing them one by one after the presentation. Okay, so I guess let's not wait time anymore. And uh, Carmen, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Thank you very much, Perfect. Caroline. And also, Perfect. I want to thank um, everyone at uh, Egg Donation Friends for this invitation. And I'm very happy to be here to, uh, on this webinar of how to tell your children that they were conceived via egg donation. Right? And um, first of all, I want to say that I personally went through a journey to become a mother. Right, and I just introduced myself a bit, and I um I just wanted to be a mother in life. You know, it's like that was my mission. That's what I wanted to do. And things got more complicated. Years went by. Nothing worked out, and I got extremely depressed. And I got so depressed. It was as if I lost my sense of living. You know, if I'm not going to be a mother, then you know, like, what else can we do? Because Everything was planned, you know, I wanted to be a teacher so I could have the same holidays as my children. Everything was focused around being a mother, right? And um, I never thought then that what seemed like my worst nightmare would fill me today with so many blessings. And, and um, I felt on my own. I would have been really happy if a group like a Donation Friends existed then. Um, I've dedicated all these years um, to helping people with what I've learnt and what I've learnt on this journey to share with you. Right? So, you know, we normally start trying naturally, you know, nothing happens. Then we go to insemination, right, where we investigate first, or well, some of you go to insemination. Then we come to in vitro and then, you know, all the issues of, okay, then getting prepared for it, facing in vitro. The emotions, the hormones, you know, happy, sad, nervous. And then when that doesn't work, we get the negatives, we go through you know, these other emotions of being depressed. And then um, we're sort of faced with egg donation, right? So then there are other issues we have to work on. And this is this each time this journey gets a bit more complicated. Yes. So it's so simple, you know, like an egg and a sperm, you know, that just stick together and grow. Why is it so difficult for some people? You know, and I used to say, but I'm a good person. Like, why is this happening to me? You know? And um, during this, we've got all these emotions, right? Ups and downs, and you're happy, and you're sad, and you're sensitive, and you know, you're going ready for the next treatment, you're getting really excited, and then oh, you come down again, and you're depressed, and so all these emotions which are going up and down all the time. And then as a couple as well, there's a lot of um, there's stress. Uh, men and women think things differently, and um, you know you become closer or you don't. You know, not understanding each other. So this is also something that we work on. And then the egg donation, when you come to choose the donor, that's another issue. So we've got all these different things which um, have been building up, and we start an inner journey, right? And in this inner journey, um, we start really learning much more about ourselves, about our partner. And I always said that it's as if you're on an intense course to be the parents you have to be for your child. 
because you're definitely, after everything you've gone through, right, you're definitely not the same person you were when you started. Yeah? You value much more having a child. Um, you value so many more things. And internally, you've grown through different things. So um, suddenly, the baby arrives, right? The baby arrives, and it's like, like a dream come true. Yeah? It's like, you know, there's so much happiness and it. you struggle so long to get to this moment. And it's just so much happiness, so much love. It sort of like blows out of you, yeah? And uh, you finally made it, right? And uh, when I did this painting, it's like, you know, a fairy tale. It's just, you know, like you don't want to wake up out of it. It's as if you're in a dream, a fantasy, you know, of all this happiness you have because of you finally, you finally made it, yeah? And um, and then, you know, you've got your baby, you're really happy with your baby, you know, and then it's, oh dear, now, how am I gonna share? It's like, you know, I'm so, I'm so happy, we're so happy, and you know, you don't want to hurt your child, right? And how are you gonna do it? Um, where do you start? Um, so this point, well, maybe when she's a bit older, or I don't want to hurt her or him, you know, in my case, it's, I have a daughter, so that's why I'm saying she. So how do you share this, you know, when? So my first question is, how are you? How do you feel? How do you feel when you reached this point? Each on through a donation and you have your child. You've been through so many things, so many ups and downs. How are you feeling? Right? And then this how are you feeling? Yes, is really important because I believe if you're okay, your child will be okay. Right? So if you're still not okay, well there are lots of people who can support you, give you advice. You know, remember there are people out there and just go get that support and you'll be fine, right? So just realize where you're feeling awkward or whatever. Because when you're fine, your baby will be fine as well. Okay. So another thing is like the word egg donation. Right? Do you say it openly? Right? Does the tone of your voice change when you say it? Do you say, Oh, I hope my child feels you know, how do you say it? Right? And um, but here the wonderful thing is that you've become a mum, right? You made it, you've become a mum. So you have to feel confident and happy however your family is formed. Nowadays families are formed so many ways. There's so many what they call modern families, right? And you know, if there are people here who uh, are listening who, you know, hasn't been a donation, it's been sperm donation or embryo donation or two dads, two moms, whatever, yeah? You have to be proud, right, that you made it, right? And how have you made it, yes? You have to feel confident. And um, so be proud of how your family was formed. And here, what's so beautiful is that, that the love for your child will help you guide you along the way. I mean, it's like, you know, nobody learns to be a parent. You learn as you go along. So as you go along, you'll also learn at what moment, when to start talking, and things like that. Okay? So what I did, um, as I said, I, when I uh, had my daughter, uh, there wasn't anything like egg donation then. Uh, I mean, uh, egg donation friends. And uh, I didn't even know about... Uh, egg donation to be honest. So I had my child through adoption. And um, I remember at that time I was very concerned about the looks or the genes and now I'm a bit embarrassed to be I'm so concerned about that and I realised how. It's not that important. At least now it isn't. So what I started doing and what you know I, I recommend is like look at other people or look at other families. And you see the father and you see their children, or the mother, the children, how many look exactly like mother liked music? How many of them liked music? 
right? Then if you start really looking at all these families, right, and you start seeing, you know, perhaps they don't look exactly the same. They don't do exactly, you know, they don't have the same hobbies, you know. So like when we're going into choosing the donor, we go, oh, well, this one likes music or this one likes, it really doesn't matter in the end, right? So notice as a family, the two of them, and really go into that. I think it's, well, at least the family is very, very interesting. And it gave me a lot of peace as well. Um, there's like a new science now called epigenetics. I just want to mention this briefly. There's um, uh, a book called The Biology of Belief from Bruce Lipton. And he dedicated his life to study the cell and genes and the DNA and all that. So if any of you want more information, I recommend this book. But what he says after studying you know, the cell, it's how the environment and the perception of the environment of where you live, what goes on around you, is what is important, right? And, and he said, you know, the most important thing we need to understand as parents is that everything we say and do for the first seven years of our children's lives is being recorded and will become their beliefs and behavior, right? So I thought this was something that I just wanted to mention um, from uh, Bruce Litt. Right, well, there's a woman called Susan. Gollenbock. And I, I don't know if you've ever heard of her, but I really admire her. I've been following her for about 14 years. And she has done a lot of research, right? And if you can think of it, egg donation, the first egg donation, I think it was in 84. So if we are in 2018, anybody there good at maths? Um, about 30, 30 something. And um, so the first child is about 30 now. So research is not only as like adoption. There have been so many years of studying and doing research. Egg donation is quite new, right? So she has dedicated her life to do the most interesting researches on, on modern families. And she wrote this book called Modern Family by Susan Gollabock. And I really recommend this book um, for all of you. Um, and in chapter four, she talks about donor conception families. And, uh, you know, they've done all kinds of studies of, you know, uh, how they adapt to families, all these different for, uh, forms of families nowadays, and how they adapt. And, you know, when you tell them younger, when you tell them older, and then all these studies which are worth looking into, right? So she says that after three decades of research, um, they're no different from any other family, right? And uh, the studies say that the best outcome uh, is before they reach school age. Right? So um, children whose parents begin to talk to them about their donor conception from an early age appear to integrate this information into their developing sense of identity. And I think this is a key point because what we want is is happy who they are, happy with their family, proud, and integrate, right? Uh, identify, yes? So when it's a young age, age, it's like, well, that's the way it is, you know, and you've always known it, and you've grown up, so it's like normal to you, right? And then this other paragraph, when it says donor offsprings who find out about their donor conception, like when they're in their teens or adulthood, they report enduring psychological distress. And um, when I heard that, because that is also happens with people who uh, are adopted, I thought, oh, I never want my daughter to go through her teens. And as it is, you know, when you're going through your teens, you're going through an identity phase and who you are and so on. And um, I said, I don't ever want her, you know, to go through any distress, anything like that. So knowing that, it was like, I have to have the strength to tell her now and not later, right? So I think this was, for me, one of the key points that helped me uh, tell my daughter. And then another thing, I just put a few points here, but reading the book, there's just so much information there that will be so helpful for you. So um, children for modern families were so desired parents, yeah? they are happier later in life because parents went through tough measures to get them and will ensure they have a caring, positive upbringing. 
And this is true. I mean, we went through so much to become parents, right? We finally became parents. We want to make sure everything's fine. So um, anyway, as I said, I really admire this woman. Her work is amazing. Also, she talks about non-disclosure and secrecy. And when there's secrecy, when you say, oh, I won't say it, you know, um, sometimes, you know, when you're just doing your treatment, maybe you told somebody. Maybe you told someone in your family, or maybe you told a friend, right? And then you decide, oh, I'm not going to tell anybody. We're going to keep it just, you know, just between us. And then there's always a risk of accidental disclosure, right? So if you've told a family member or friend, just something might come out by mistake. Yeah? And, and it's better that they be told by you and not by someone else. Right? And this also comes out in uh, Susan Vollenbock's book. Right? I mean, finding out by someone else and coming, Mom, is that true? It must be you know, really difficult for them. Well, why didn't you tell me? You know, well, what was wrong? Why didn't you tell me? I mean, so, um, uh, this is a very interesting uh, point of view. Right? So then we come to what age? Okay, what age is the best? So after having seen what we slipped in from one to seven, right? Uh, after reading uh, Susan Goldenbach and seeing the research, it's best before preschool, right? Um, because sometimes we would think, oh, you know, when they're old enough to understand, I'll sit down with them and talk. But it's like, it's really difficult to get to that moment. It's much easier than before. Yeah? You know, and then what happens when they ask questions? What happens if they never ask questions? Yeah? So um, uh, I personally, I believe in starting as a baby. And uh, I'll explain this a little bit further. Now, right? So I believe in storytelling. Right? And uh, this was how I told my daughter this story. Right? And when I, I would read it to her as a baby, right? and when I started reading, I would read it and I would cry. Yeah? So I'd read the story, I'd cry a bit, and um, I would you know, continue reading the next day. And each time I read it more, I felt more confident. And I started working on my issues till the day came when I was reading the book, and it was just like really easy to read. Yeah? And it, reading is like natural. It's natural that you read to your child before. So you read one book, then you read the book on information, and you know, you just swap reading different books, right? And then gradually, as I said, I believe it's really important that you have to be fine. And this is a way that, first of all, starts with you. So by reading it many times, uh, it helps, right? But then another thing is that, um, you know, not to see the book as, oh, that book is the, oh, it's the book of exclamation, you know, and, you know, and give it that importance. No, make it a normal book, right? So uh, there are many books on exclamation, right? But um, it's getting the book and showing them to observe them, right? And look at this and look at that. And have them observe and teach them to notice different things in the images, right? So try and uh, use the book for a different perspective as well, right? And it takes that pressure of just being the edition book, right? And then laugh with the book. So, you know, when there's a drawing, you know, like the rabbit, you know, and the hat has two holes for the ears to come out. The ha 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 ha. So what you're doing is when you touch that book, your child knows you're going to laugh with the book, so you're anchoring fun to that book, right? And it's giving it another perspective, right? And then um, I taught my daughter to read with uh, that, the, uh, the book I had then. And um, how did I teach her to read? Well, I would read the paragraph. I would teach her the letter A, uh, the letter A, uh. So I would read, and then when I reached A, uh, I would pause. And maybe I'd nudge her and she'd go, ah. So then I'll continue reading and then, ah. So she thought she was reading with me, right? And then once every time we'd read it, she knew where the ah were. And then I'd teach her the or I'd teach her uh, with, right? 
so gradually, I mean, the book was like, it was fun, it was lovely drawings, and it was fun because it was like the book was you could start reading with. So the book had many different perspectives, not just egg donation, right? And by making it a special book, you bring it along with you, you know, it gets really old, tatty with you, you might have to stick the cover back on, and wherever you go, just put it in the bag. So it's like familiar to be around, yes? And this is what I did uh, with the book in my daughter, right? And there are many books for all these modern families. And uh, this is what I suggest. This is my way um, I, that I recommend to share with your child, right? Um, in, mm, I don't want younger there, don't I? In um, 2005, I was invited to India. And then um, I had become a mother in 1999. Right, so my daughter Nicole was six then, and I had been helping uh, families on sharing with their child through adoption, and uh, with this technique of reading, and you know supporting couples. So I was invited. So look, how would you help people with sharing adoption? How would you do with someone who had their child through egg donation? So. Um, I investigated, as I said, there wasn't that much information except from Susan Bolivar. So I, I, I saw her research and I went to give a lecture and I, you know, and I was just said, well, egg donation book. So I did the story for, I did that, I wrote it in 2005 for that lecture I was asked to give in India, right? And um, this is the first one I did. This is the one I took with me when I went there. And I even had done like a bunny rubber and the bag and everything because it was like everything to make it as loving as possible, right? So that led me to write um, this egg donation story for, for girls, boys and twins, right? And um, it's just a very sweet way, right, of sharing. And now what I've done to be able to get even closer to your child, I've personalized the book. So what happens when you personalize them? Well, the rabbits have your names, right? So it's got your, the mum, dad name and the child's name. And if it's two dads, well, the two dads or the single mum or whoever, and you put your name. So in a way, it's disassociating it, right? So the rabbits have your names and the rabbits, that family was born through egg donation, have your names. So in a way, it's helping you to open this space, right? This was another one, uh, and it's got egg donation, sperm donation, for heterosexual uh, families. But there are many books, not just mine, right? There are many books out there, which I highly recommend. And some people will like more books, some like, will like other books. It doesn't matter. Have several. They're all of them, right? But books is just so, such a fabulous way to share it, right? And children love books, yeah? So um, what happens when they start asking questions? So first of all, right? You start reading the story when they're young and babies, um, their brain waves when they're small, it's open. They say that in uh, uh, delta and theta level, right? So they just absorb information. They don't analyze. You know, oh, is it right for me to have my bottle now? No, they don't. They just absorb all this information. So by reading the book or talking to them, even as they're babies, they start absorbing it. And then when they know, when they're ready to understand, it's as if they always knew, it was like always heard of, or somewhere in the background, they always knew it, it becomes, you know, it's a children, as they start growing up, start asking questions. And um, uh, there was one video, actually it was a commercial, and there was this man and son, and uh, the son had asked uh, the question, oh dad, what's, what does sex mean? So you see the video and the dad is talking and the watch goes by and time goes by and the dad is giving all this information and the clock keeps on going by. And then at the end, he says, son, was I clear? Did I explain everything? And the son shows this format and says, sex, male or female? What do I put in, right? So I just, I like using this example because children are children and they ask children's questions. So you don't need to give all the information. Gradually, you give a bit more and a bit more, but your heart will tell you the same as your heart tells you how to be a parent. Your heart will tell you gradually, and you start giving whatever information your child needs. But I want you to remember 
that your child is a child doesn't need total information all in one go. You gradually, bit by bit, you'll know when. You follow your heart and you start giving that information, right? You know how children like, they always ask, oh, how old are you? You know, I had to this friend of mine, she was 85, and, uh, you know, children, how old are you? And she would say, I'm 25, but ooh, that's old. They like information, they like response, and it's important the way how you are when you respond. You know, go, ooh, you know, if, if they, they can tell if you're nervous. They can tell if you don't know how to manage it, right? And, um, you know, it's like when you're traveling as well. And your child says, oh, how long to get there? Well, you don't go into all the details, so many kilometers, we're going through this and this and this. It's, oh, we're going to be there soon, love. And, you know, and as they grow older, well, it's just we're going to go to another town and then we're going to get there. And each time, according to their age, you give them a bit more. All they want is your reassurance and that everything's fine or whatever. Okay. And then another thing, there was this film, I, I think it was called Three, Three Men and a Baby. And there was one scene where, you know, these men who had never looked after a child in their lives, um, he's trying to put the baby to sleep. And he's reading a sports magazine of a, a boxing, uh, a boxing, uh, what we call it, match or whatever. And um, he's reading it and he's going, oh, and then he was punched in the face. And so he was reading it in a very loving way. So I so said, what are you doing? He says, it, what's important is the way you say it, not what you say. But the way you say it. So I agree with this, yes. So it's the way you give the information, okay? In a loving way, you feeling confident. And if you're confident, your baby's gonna be fine, okay? And as I said, you know, you're learning to be parents, right? It's a process of it. And gradually. And if there's something you feel insecure, just go get help. And that's it. There are loads of people, there are loads of specialists, and I'm sure. In Ed Donation Friends, there are lots of places and people they can recommend to help you just go once or twice, whatever doubts you have, whatever fears you have, and um, and work on it. I remember I would start reading a story to my daughter as a baby, and then uh, the bag, the book was everywhere. I stick the cover back on, and one day I'm reading the story, and she says, "Oh, and do you know who that lady is?" And I said, uh, 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 "No," and so I was completely got. By surprise, and children normally do that. They'll they'll say or ask the question where you least expect, right? And, and um, so I worked on myself again, got the book again, and read it again, right? And um, and gradually, as she grew up, she always knew when I gave her the information, and everything was fine. So she knows the way our family was formed. We're very proud to have a family the way we are. And um, anyway, so. I think this is a, a, a very good technique. Right? So always try to keep things simple because sometimes we, you know, we think so much about things. And if you think, oh, and if I do it here or I do it there, there's like a million possibilities, right? I mean, everything can happen, right? millions of possibilities. And if you think of all those millions of possibilities, you can end up exhausted, right? So it's like this, you know, things I worry about, all the things you worry about, right? the things that can happen, right? And then the things that do happen are very small. So keep it simple, enjoy, don't worry, go with the flow, yes, and just listen to your heart. And as I tell you, the love of your baby will help you uh, along the way, okay? Anyway, so um, this is uh, what I wanted to share with you, and I want to know if anybody has any questions or want to ask me anything. Um, I'd be more than delighted. Okay, perfect, Carmen. Thank you so much for this and providing us with so many interesting stories. Um, I'm sure we will have lots of questions. I actually do see we have some questions.